I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie, and this is The Cool Part Show, our show all about innovative 3D printed parts. Today on the show, we're talking about plastic replacing metal. This is an air duct for an aircraft. Uh, usually duct work in a plane, this kind of duct would be made of metal because of all of the performance and safety requirements that it has to meet. But because of a newly invented material, this duct is made of polymer. 3D printed air ducts for aircraft on this episode of The Cool Part Show. This episode of The Cool Part Show is brought to you by Carpenter Additive. The company's Powder Life solution is a combination of hardware and software technologies designed to help AM users manage their metal powders. Stay tuned after the episode for more on how the system works. Welcome to The Cool Parts Show. Thanks for joining us. If you like the show, make sure to subscribe on YouTube to get notified about our new episodes. You can also sign up for our all access newsletter to get notified about new episodes even a little bit earlier. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about this polymer composite air duct. So this is an air duct for an aircraft. Airplanes have HVAC systems. This is a duct that is in some ways a lot like the air ducts you have in your home and in other ways it's a lot different. Because of the requirements for a duct that has to perform well and safely inside an airplane, uh, requirements related to strength and flammability, just to name a couple, a duct section like this is often, usually, made of metal, made of aluminum. But this one is made of polymer composite. It was 3D printed by Eaton. So Eaton is a large contract manufacturer. They serve a number of different industries, one of which is aerospace. And they've been using additive manufacturing for a long time for things like functional prototyping. But that's not what this is. This is a representation of a real air duct that would go into a real aircraft that is now being made through large format additive manufacturing. Eaton is increasingly relying on additive manufacturing as a means of production. We've reported on this not too long ago. We visited a facility in South Carolina, Eaton facility, using additive manufacturing capacity to produce fuel system components for aircraft. We will put a link to the article in the show description. This is a different opportunity. This is polymer replacing metal for additive manufacturing of air ducts. Eaton has a materials development group that has created the material that now seems to promise to bring about a freer, more flexible way to manufacture aircraft duct sections more flexible because parts like this would typically be made from sheet metal, from aluminum. You would have to bend it, form it, weld it together. There's a lot of steps just to get the shape that you want before you get to things like cleaning and finishing and other things that might have to happen here. And so Eaton was looking for a way to simplify the manufacturing of components like this. And so actually 3D printing was not the first place that that thinking led them. Yeah, to talk about that, here is Javid Mapkar. He is senior technical manager with the advanced materials and processes group of Eaton's research lab in Southfield, Michigan. So uh, in 2015-2016 we had a project uh, with our aerospace team called uh, blow molded ducts to replace metallic ducts with, uh, with polymer composite using blow molding. The technology was very good. Uh, we were able to address some of the parts but then we realized that there were some limitations with blow molding. Uh, it can only be used for simple geometries. Uh, it cannot be used for parts which have rapid transition, such as the part that we are showing you in one, which is going from a bigger diameter to smaller diameter. And then for each different part, you ne need tooling. So for aerospace, where there is high mix, low volume, it becomes costly because of the, the toolings. Uh, that's where we realize there's an opportunity to look into an alternate technology. Javid was talking about rapid transitions. So we can see that in this part. The way that the cross-sectional shape of this part transitions rapidly from this broad rectangular form into this tighter circular form. Blow molding, it's a, it's a means of working with polymer that's kind of like blowing up a balloon. It's air pressure is used to press the polymer film against the shape of the mold. So soft drink bottles are made that way. And it might have been a way to make polymer duct sections, but yeah, these, these quick geometric transitions in a shape like this were challenging to do through blow molding. So Eaton discovered that it was constrained in the forms that it could design into the ducts. At that time, 
additive manufacturing, especially this uh, open uh, uh, material printers were coming. So we looked at additive manufacturing as a parallel path and then we bought a $1,000 printer uh, from, from the market and took one of the material that we were developing for uh, aerospace fuel tube, it was a ESD nylon, converted that into filament and started printing with that. Uh, the initial results were very promising and we were able to basically put a business case and pitch to our management for seed funding. So that nylon material that Javed mentioned, he said it's an ESD material. So that stands for electrostatic dissipative. ESD materials basically prevent static electricity by uh, slowing down and grounding any electrical charges that are being built up so that you don't get a spark. They're used to protect electronics, to prevent ignition of flammable substances, like for instance, that aerospace fuel. They were using that ESD nylon to make these ducts initially and it worked. And, and to some extent, the, these ducts need sort of the same properties. They need those, those ESD properties as well. But at a certain point, they realized that that material was not really optimized and they needed to develop a new novel material specifically targeted, specifically designed for 3D printed air ducts. A material they developed themselves. So the, the base material for this duct is PEC, polyether ketone ketone. We've done previous episodes involving 3D printing with PEC, links in show description. Uh, this PEC in this duct for added strength is reinforced with microscopic carbon fiber filament, but um, there's a lot more going on here than that. This material is tuned for this application. To get into uh, all of the requirements of a reinforced PEC that can serve in this application, here's one other team member who's been involved with this project all along. This is Si Chen. She is a senior specialist engineer with a focus on polymer nanocomposites. Yeah, so when it comes to aerospace materials, there's a very extensive list of requirements you have. First of all, there is a V0 flame rating. That means a material, this flame must extinguish within 10 seconds of a vertical surface. In addition to that, there's things like chemical resistance, um, smoke and toxicity, flame resistance. So those are the general requirements a material will have to go through. Uh, in addition to application specific requirements, things like vibration handling, the specific um, strength requirements, um, of the part uh, that's going to go on. All of those things you would need to look at when, it's, when you're thinking about putting some materials on an airplane. So we wanted to look at a material that would satisfy all of those applications uh, in addition to being uh, high performance at high temperature. So the material we developed um, is a PEC nanocomposite. Nanocomposite uh, is a material that has some uh, nanofillers. So, so uh, what when you think about composites, typically you have continuous carbon fiber composites. So that's a long strand of carbon fiber that has a, that's surrounded by epoxy. So in this case, it's uh, na nanomaterials is a filler that has a dimension in the nano scale. It's especially developed for additive manufacturing. What that means, it has really good printability. It has a good mouth strength, so it really holds its shape well while you're printing. So it is a high temperature, high performance material. We were able to dial in the process really well to get really good inner layer adhesion uh, and strength out of the parts. We can get about 60% um, 60 to 65 percent of the Z strength when compared to XY. Um, in addition to that, we also have um, tailored conductivity for the material. Depending on what your need is, you can, um, look, for example, if you want a uh, ESD um, material, then we can, uh, that this material will satisfy that. So getting the material right and in fact inventing a new material was necessary to start printing these air ducts that would be suitable for use in aircraft. But there were some things to work out on the 3D printing side as well. So as Javed said earlier, this project started with a, a printer that cost about $1,000. And at a certain point, they needed something that was more repeatable, more reliable, and a lot bigger to do the things that they wanted to do. So this air duct was made on a Titan pellet 3D printer from 3D Systems. The machine we're currently printing with is the 3D Systems Titan Pellet Printer. 
like the name suggests, it's a pellet printer. So we specifically chose the pellet piece of it because uh, one, you can directly print with pellets. So it's lower cost, it's faster. There's less processing on the raw material side that's needed. And also with the type of parts that we're looking at, we wanted large parts. So pellet printing allows us to have that build volume that some of the like SLS, LFDM may not support. There's also the speed. So for pellet printing, you can move a lot more materials through on a per hour basis compared to SLS and FDM. All those things considered, we did a pretty thorough market analysis on, at the time when we were looking at the machine. And one of the key things that we we're looking at was um, manufacturing maturity. So we wanted to look at a machine that has that focus um, in repeatability of the parts um, and Titan um, and 3D system at the time. Um, had the best uh, on the market. So that's why we went with that. And so far we've been very happy with it. A lot of extrusion 3D printers use material in the form of a filament. The pellet material is easier to work with in formulation. Eaton formulates its own material on site at the same Michigan location where this 3D printing is being done. But more importantly, uh, Eaton is going to produce big duct sections. Like this is a pretty big 3D printed part, but this is a duct that is even bigger. And um, duct components like this are headed toward production, uh, headed toward 3D printing at production speed and production quantities. So in anticipating all of that, Eaton needs to think about the, the kind of 3D printing platform that can keep pace with that demand. These are bigger parts with multiple transitions, but we can print them in less than 12 hours in, in one go. So there is shorter lead time, uh, there is uh, less post-processing, right? You don't need to do all the cleaning and other things. For this ESD PEC material, we are trying to qualify that uh, with Nair uh, from Wichita State University for B basis allowable. So that way the material uh, will be qualified uh, with, with the th uh, 3D Systems Titan printer for aerospace application. So that's our focus. We kind of like for that you need to make multiple batches of the material, print on multi uh, different printers and show repeatability. So that will give us confidence to our customers or uh, who wants to work with us that this material has all the right uh, requirement. All right, I think we got this. This is an aircraft duct section, part of the HVAC system for an airplane. Normally a part like this would be made out of formed aluminum. This is made out of reinforced polymer composite, made out of a special PEC-based material that was created by Eaton. Eaton decided to pursue 3D printed air ducts because they were looking for a faster and more flexible way of producing these components. Getting to this point has involved developing their own novel material for this application, as well as working on the print parameters and uh, doing a lot of development to optimize the whole process for these parts. There's more work to do. They're working on qualification right now, but they see a lot of promise in 3D printed polymer air ducts as a replacement for formed aluminum. Javed and C had more to say about that promise. Our All Access newsletter subscribers got to see an extra video segment where Javed and C talked about the future of the 3D printing platform and the kind of 3D printing advances they're looking for that it's going to take this work to the next step. You can see that video too. Just sign up for our All Access newsletter. It's free. So if you like the show, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon on YouTube to get notified about all of our new episodes. If you have a cool part that you'd like to share with us, please email us, coolparts at additivemanufacturing.media. Thank you for watching. Thanks again to our sponsor, Carpenter Additive. In addition to supplying metal powders, the company also offers services, software, and hardware to help AM users manage their powder. One example is the Powder Life System, a combination of cloud-based tracking software with hardware designed to make powder handling easier. Two key components are the Powder Life Hopper and the automated docking station. Luke Boyer, manager of Powder Life Applications and Andrew Holiday, applications engineer, explained how the system works. So today, when a user of additive manufacturing is receiving powder, they oftentimes receive it in either five, 10, uh, 15, maybe a 20 kilo uh, bottle. Um, but they're receiving pallets of them, and you're receiving 10, 20, 50, hundreds of, of these bottles. The user you know, has to look and, and, and segregate and store them uh, appropriately so the bottles don't get mixed up. And it requires a lot of lifting and, and moving and labor. 
The components of Powder Life are all based around making the powder management systems on the added manufacturing shop floor easier to use for the operator, cleaner, as well as more traceable. Three of those basic parts of Powder Life are our Powder Life hoppers, or our storage containers for powder. The second would be automated uh, docking systems that allow material to be pushed in and out of machines with uh, no human contact. And the third would be our Powder Life online software system that allows you to trace this powder as it goes through your shop floor. The hardware, the software together, just helps really streamline that and, uh, and, and improve the final user's experience uh, and let them concentrate on going from design to the part itself. It takes the headache of powder management out of the equation for them.